New Mexico State may have lost to Liberty in the Conference USA Championship game, but make no mistake here, the Aggies are still by far and away college football's best story in 2023. You have a historically bad program that has managed to punch well above its weight despite pretty limited resources, especially when compared to their peers. I'm Cheyenne Hollis, this is The Touchback, and today we are celebrating those fighting Aggies of New Mexico State. Pop quiz, who is the most famous New Mexico State alum to have played in the NFL? I would argue that it's Joe Pisarchik. You might otherwise know him as the quarterback who fumbled the ball that allowed for the miracle at the Meadowlands to happen. Sure, there have been a few other Aggies to have made it to the NFL and carved out a nice career for themselves. For example, there's Charlie Johnson who started more than 100 games at quarterback during the 1960s and 1970s. But let's be honest here, the program doesn't exactly have a long track record of success when it comes to producing NFL talent. That is certainly not for a lack of trying. In fact, you may be surprised to find out that New Mexico State football has been around since 1894. At least that is the first time they ever played in-state rival New Mexico. Back in those early days, the school in Las Cruces was known as New Mexico A&M and wouldn't be rebranded until, well, about the time the football team found some sustained success. In 1960, the university would become New Mexico State, and this was ending perhaps the most successful two-year period in football history for the Aggies. They won back-to-back -back Sun Bowls in 1959 and 1960, with the latter season seeing the team go unbeaten and finish the year ranked in the AP Top 25. While the Aggies wouldn't go bowling under then head coach Warren Woodson, the team remained extremely competitive until 1967, and this is when, well, shit kinda hits the fan for the Aggies. After that 1967 season, school administrators forced Woodson into a mandatory age retirement as he would turn 65 before the next campaign began, and state law at the time required state employees to retire at the age of 65. Ultimately though, the decision by the school to force Woodson into retirement had nothing to do with him being 65 years old and had everything to do with the two sides butting heads during his entire tenure as head coach. This was simply a convenient reason to get rid of Woodson and bring on a new coach. Boy, was that ever a colossal mistake. Woodson was in charge of the Aggies for 10 seasons and managed to finish with a winning record on seven occasions. In the 55 years since Woodson was let go, New Mexico State has finished with a winning record seven times in total. It's safe to say these have been some lean decades for those fans in Las Cruces. Their appearance in a bowl game this year means they will have finally surpassed what Woodson accomplished in his 10-year stint, that of course being two bowl appearances. This time period of the last 55 seasons, it has not been particularly fun for New Mexico State. It's really just been nothing but losing streaks, conference jumping, body bag games, more losing streaks, and generally just a lot of uncertainty. Two separate stints as an independent, being one of the last two schools standing in the old wagon, getting booted out of the Sun Belt only made the mountain the Aggies had to climb that much steeper. Of course, there was one thing the school had working in its favors, that being a pair of rivals willing to schedule home and home series with them. That is what ultimately doomed any attempts by Idaho to stay. FBS. New Mexico and UTIP have never had any issues scheduling games with New Mexico State, no matter the conference affiliation or just how bad the team was in general. Idaho had no such luxury after Boise State and Washington State told the Vandals to go kick rocks. I don't want to let my inner Vandal get sidetracked with all that, so let's refocus our attention on the 2023 season for New Mexico State. For the first time since 1967 and 1968, the Aggies have finished with a winning record for consecutive seasons. And for the first time since those back-to-back -back Sun Bowl appearances, this team is going bowling for two years in a row. 
It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. The college football landscape is wildly different today than it was way back when New Mexico State was last consistently good. We are in a time of college football where money is everything. And despite this, the Aggies, they found a way to make it work. They are doing more with less. A lot less. Auburn paid Brian Harson $15.3 million to not coach the team. They then handed Hugh Freeze $6.5 million to coach the Tigers this season. New Mexico State head coach Jerry Kill makes a little more than half a million dollars. Still a great salary, still obviously can live a pretty nice life, but clearly a fraction of what Auburn is handing out to coaches. But this, just the tip of the iceberg. Auburn's football operations for 2022 were more than $50 million dollars. Expenses for all of New Mexico State's athletic department were 23 million. New Mexico State's entire all sports combined spent less than half of what Auburn spends on football. All of this makes the Aggies 31-10 victory over the Tigers in Auburn all the more incredible. This is one of those results that no one will talk about years from now because Auburn was not very good. But I mean, this is just absolutely stunning no matter how you actually look at it. In a sport where athletic departments are flushing cash down the toilet as if they were drug dealers trying to dispose of coke when the cops come knocking at the door, New Mexico State has made it work with less. They have managed a way to find some modicum of success, of achievement without all of this ridiculousness. Look, it's not sustainable long term. And if we're being totally honest here, New Mexico State has probably reached its peak as a college football program. That being a few winning seasons mixed in with some losing seasons and you know, maybe just maybe you get to 10 wins if everything breaks right for you. Certainly a lot of this success must be attributed to head coach Jerry Kill. New Mexico State over those previous 50 some odd years, they made a few dubious coaching hires and they let some of those dubious coaching hires stick around far longer than they had any right to. So, you know, kudos for Kill for turning this around. Kudos for New Mexico State for giving Kill the opportunity to take over as head coach. The thing is though, who knows if this is a level that can be maintained, especially if he should eventually leave for a job higher up on the food chain. That though is a question and a concern for another time because right now it's time for New Mexico State to celebrate and just enjoy the fruits of a 10 win season, something that honestly I didn't think we would ever see in my lifetime given historically where the Aggies have been at. When you look at the previous 50 plus years of New Mexico State football, along with the current realities of the sport in general, what this program has accomplished is better than anything else to have happened in college football this year. Hands down, without question, no competition. In a season defined by cheating, greed, and an absolute complete disdain for college football fans, New Mexico State their story was a lone bright spot. Sure, you can say it's only Conference USA or it doesn't really matter. And you know what? That may be true in the grand scheme of things. Very few people are actually going to remember the exploits of New Mexico State in 2023. But I can promise you this, for the fans and the students who were there and got to experience it, this season will mean everything to them. And I know that from experience as an Idaho alum who was attending the school in 2009 for our amazing historic humanitarian bowl season. These types of years for programs like Idaho and New Mexico State, they mean the world to us. As, a, as an Idaho fan, as an Idaho alum, that humanitarian bowl season was one of the most remarkable, spectacular, and fun experiences I've got to have, especially when you look at what came before and what came after. Ohio State, Michigan, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, whatever the case may be, those fan bases are absolutely miserable unless their team is close to perfect and in the playoffs and winning championships. At a school like New Mexico State, 
You don't need any of that. Just being good every once in a while is what makes college football everything for you. So congrats, New Mexico State. A 10-win season is an absolute achievement for the Aggies, and you should be proud, and you should enjoy your bowl game, and you should enjoy moments like this when you can. I don't think any of us know where you are going to be even three to five to ten years from now, but this is something, this is a moment in time you can always cherish. So yeah, go Aggies in whatever bowl game you end up in this season. That does it for me. I'm Cheyenne Hollis. This is the Touchback and as always, hashtag take it out to the 25.